Welcome to our review on titration calculations. So once we've actually carried out a titration, there's a few things that we then know. We know the two reactants that we've used. We know the volume and concentration of one of the reactants, and we know the volume of the other reactant. So from those three bits of information, we can actually calculate the unknown concentration. In order to do that, we need to remember the formula, which is the amount in moles is the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed times by the volume in decimeters cubed. If you prefer to remember triangles, then I've given you the one there. So N is the amount in moles, C the concentration and V is the volume. Let's have a look at the type of question we could be given then. So 25 centimetres cubed of 0.100 mole per dm cubed sodium hydroxide was titrated with dilute hydrochloric acid. The mean titer of the acid was 20.00 centimetres cubed. Calculate the concentration of the acid. And we've got a balanced symbol equation there. First thing to do is get your highlighter out, underline, circle, whatever it is to make those important bits of information stand out so that when you're using them throughout the question, you don't have to keep reading the whole thing through. So we've got 25 centimetres cubed of a 0.10 solution. So we've put that in one colour to remind us those two go together. And we've got a volume of 20 centimetres cubed for the other. So the first thing we should obviously notice there is the fact that both of those volumes are given in centimetres cubed. So step one, convert our centimetres cubed to decimetres cubed by dividing by 1000. So our volume of sodium hydroxide would be 25 divided by 1000 to give us 0.025 and our hydrochloric acid is 20 divided by 1000, 0.02. Step two is to calculate the amount of the reactant that we've got the volume and the concentration for, which in this case is sodium hydroxide. So we go back to our formula for that, and the amount is the concentration times the volume. So 0.1 times our volume in decimeters cubed, 0.025, gives us 0.0025 moles. The third step is we need to look at that balanced equation, because we need to know the ratio of the reactants to one another. In this case, we've got one mole of our sodium hydroxide reacting with one mole of hydrochloric acid. So we've just worked out the fact that we've got 0.0025 moles of sodium hydroxide. Therefore, applying those same proportions, we must have it reacting with 0.0025 moles of hydrochloric acid. The fourth step is to use our formula to work out the unknown concentration. So we've got our amount, which is 0.0025. We've got our volume, which is in our question there, which we've converted into decimeters cubed, which is 0.020. When we divide the 0.0025 by 0.02, we get 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed. What we went through there was a simple one, where it was a one-to-one -one ratio but they're not always going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So I've given you a second example here, which is taking us through where we've got one mole of a reactant reacting with two moles of the other. So again, I've started off just by highlighting the key bits of information for each of our reactants in different colors. We've converted our volumes into decimeters cubed by dividing by 1000. And then we've worked out the amount of our sodium hydroxide because that's the one that we have both the volume and a concentration for by using our formula on the right. So by the end of that, we've got the amount of sodium hydroxide as being 0.010 moles. Then we need to look at our balanced equation. And as I said, in this case, we've got two moles of sodium hydroxide reacting with one mole of sulfuric acid. So we've worked out that 0.010 moles of sodium hydroxide is reacting in our actual question. So we need to then apply the same proportions. If we've got two moles of sodium hydroxide react with one mole of sulfuric acid, but we've got 0.010, then we need to divide that by two 
to give us the moles of sulfuric acid to keep it in that same ratio. Once we've got that, we can then calculate the concentration because we've got the amount in moles and we've got our volume and that gives us our 0 0.0050 divided by 0 0.01 and that gives us our answer of 0 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. I know that when you look at these titration calculations, they look incredibly complex and you think, how on earth am I gonna remember how to do this? The reality is we've only got four steps that you need to carry out. First one, convert the volumes to decimeters cubed by dividing by a thousand. Secondly, calculate the amount of the reactant we know the volume and concentration for, because that's just times the concentration by the volume. We use the balanced equation to work out the amount of our other reactant. And then we use our formula once more to work out the unknown concentration. So it's just those four steps you need to work through, remembering our one formula on the right. To give you an alternative way of setting this out, because I know that not all of you like to have long lists of calculations going down a page, then we can summarize it into the little table there. I'm just taking the same example one that we had previously, but we're just gonna set it out in a different way. So we've got our two column headings, one for the acid, one for the alkali, and then we've got the three things that make up our formula. The amount in moles, the volume in decimeters cubed, and the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. Once you've got your table drawn out, fill in the blanks of what it tells you in the question. So we know the two volumes, but they're in centimeters cubed, so divide them by a thousand to give you them in decimeters cubed, and write them into the right boxes on the table. We can then write down our concentration as well from the question, so that's three boxes out of our six already filled in. We can see that for our alkali, we had that one box for the amount, which was blank. Using our formula on the right, we can do our concentration times volume to then give us that amount. So 0.1 times 0.025, gives us 0.0025. To give us the amount of our acid, look at the balanced equation and make sure we apply the same ratios. So this is a one to one, therefore 0.025 must be 0.025 for our acid as well. So fill in that box. That leaves us then with just the concentration for our acid blank, go back to our formula and we know that the amount in moles divided by the volume tells us the concentration. So plug those numbers into your calculator, 0.0025 divided by 0.020 gives us our answer of 0.125. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can recall the formula for calculating the concentration when given the amount in moles and the volume. You can also carry out titration calculations involving concentrations and volumes using one of the two methods I've shown you.